All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the Adult Learning Hub Masterclass Series. In this program, we feature those who are making a measurable impact in adult learning around the world. And the experts that we feature offer what I feel are really exclusive and exciting insights for us as educators and practitioners to better our practice, uh, more confidently navigate our ever-changing educational landscape and the world around us. And I'm excited as well, too, because we get to feel energized and improve our outcomes for our learners that we serve in our various contexts. I'm so pleased to welcome my guest today, Elizabeth Draper. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. Hello. It's lovely to be here. Thank you Thanks for inviting me. Hey, I'm, uh, it's all good. I can't wait for our, our discussion uh, this afternoon. So why don't you tell us um, a little bit about who you are, where you're based and, and what you do? Okay, so my name's Elizabeth Draper. I'm currently based in the Northwest where I've been for about the past 15 years in Manchester. Um, I've been teaching and working as an English specialist for nearly 30 years. Mm. Um, I work as a writer, editor, activist uh, for a meaningful, relevant uh, English curriculum with a particular focus on English in FE and adult community education. Um, and I've done quite a bit of work about the GCSE reset, angst and pain. Um, mm. And um, I am also a trustee of the English Association, which is a subject association, which provides fantastic support and an incredible network and resource for English specialists across the whole of education, including FE and adult community education. Um, and I'm also a member of the OCR, the exam board, uh, English um, consortium. And um, I, you know, obviously I've taught on lots of different courses um, lit from literacy right through to, um, you know, functional skills, GCSE, um, A-levels, um, access, loads of years and years on access mm. um, and creative writing workshops, um, all sorts in all sorts of contexts. But uh, sort of the core of my work has either been in FE colleges or uh, sixth form colleges um, and the WEA as well. Excellent. So that's kind of in a, nut, in a nutshell, 30 years, you know. <laughs> Just a few drips and drabs here and there. My goodness, such a wide variety of experience. What was, what's been your favorite context to work in so far? Oh my, you know, any, any room full of students, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't matter the context actually, mm -hmm. is working with, you know, is working as a teacher with students, it's just there's nothing like it. It's an incredibly rewarding, invigorating, mm. dynamic human experience, which mm. I have loved. Mm. There's something quite um, special that happens when there's a group of learners in the room. Um, and especially with you as a facilitator, I can only imagine <laughs> what that must have been like. <laughs> and mm. How did you get your start in adult learning? What was that kind of spark that got you interested in, in working in, in this particular field? Well, you know, I think one of the things that kind of got me going was I went back to university in my early 30s to do an MA. Mm. And when I, you know, and I was just, I'd been working in the book trade until then. And, uh, and as I was doing my MA, being back in education as an adult learner, as I was then, Mm. I kind of it kind of blew my mind I found it incredibly hard actually mm. um and um but it, it woke it reawoke my kind of interest in 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 what education is all about and that is what made me go and do a PGCE because I thought actually and it was to do with reading and books and all that because I love everything to do with English and literature and stuff like that mm. so um that kind of ignited me myself being a kind of early 30s student back in in an HE context mm. but also when I was um 16 I, I myself did A levels in an FE college for a whole range of reasons I left home when I was 16 and stuff like that and, and my FE teachers were absolutely critical in providing me with um a bridge in a very very difficult time for me mm. personally and uh so I, 
you know, I had my own incredible experience as a student in, in, a, in a very difficult time uh, with the support of FE teachers. Mm. And um, so that combined those two th personal factors mm. had a massive effect on me. And then, uh, you know, I ended up work being a panel tutor for the WEA when I first started off as a teacher and working in community centres and, and on literacy projects and all things like that as well as working in, on access courses in Lambeth this is in London mm. um, at Lambeth College um, so a whole you know obviously these things are complicated aren't they mm. but it sounds like you've got a real um, desire for learning as well as uh, sort of developing yourself and working through challenges but also having support around you and I think that's vital, isn't it, um, for yeah. continuing in education is getting that support from, from educators. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So what's a little unknown fact? I love asking this question, a little unknown fact that maybe most people don't know about you. <laughs> well, one little unknown fact is that one summer mm -hmm. um, I cycled up the Picos de Europa which are in Northern Spain, it's this mountain range. And I can tell you, I hadn't quite computed how bloody high this mountain <laughs> range was um, in the heat of the summer, but it was an incredible experience. Although sometimes I did come off the bike and lie in a ditch and say I wasn't gonna go on any further, but I did, I made it to the top <laughs> and it took a whole day to come down and it was amazing. So there you are. Brilliant. That's my own fact. Love it. Love it. So one of the reasons that I wanted to interview you, um, and I'm so glad I've got you here today, um, because there's a project that you were involved in during lockdown called the Quarantines. And I want you to tell uh, the Adult Learning Hub audience what it is and how you identified the need to conduct a project like this. It's quite unique. Okay, so mm. first of all, the project itself isn't called the quarantines. Okay, it's okay. The project mm. itself was called Literature in Action. Right. Um, yeah. And the reason it came into being was when I became a trustee of the English Association, which was last November, mm. about November time, mm. um, I was invited to um, contribute to a discussion about the role of literature for young people. Mm. And um, in that discussion, I, I put forward and the need for there to be a social platform for young people to express what the hell is going on during this pandemic. <laughs> um, because there, there aren't enough spaces and places for young people free of institutions actually, mm. to really let rip and, and express what the hell is going on for them. And um, so I put this forward to the English Association and they were just amazing as indeed they are as an organization in that they responded incredibly proactively and just said, okay, let's do it, let's do it. So, um, so I had a number of meetings with um, Rebecca Fisher, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the English Association, who's an incredibly dynamic person, and Jenny Richards from Newcastle University, who's also equally dynamic and amazing. Mm. And the three of us together um, discussed this project called, and um, decided to call it Literature in Action, mm. and how we could go about providing a social platform. And um, so I went away and through networking, through my own community of, of having worked in FE for a long time. Um, and, you know, one thing after another, I managed to gather together um, a group of young people from all over England, from different colleges all over England, to participate in this um, Literature in Action project, where the idea was for young people to be given an opportunity to express uh, in any shape or form uh, creatively through literature or visually or you know through sound or whatever their their experiences and for us to also invite these young people to edit so to take control for it to be their project but we would facilitate and support them as indeed we did and then with an end result of publication and um, I suggested when I was at uh, asked you know when do you think we should fit, start this and when do you think we should finish it I said let's start it now and let's finish it next July and have it done and dusted because it's the immediacy that really matters because mm. it's here and now that's going on mm. and they all agreed wholeheartedly and it was launched on the 18th of July and the students called it the quarantine so it's their title which is just brilliant and captures yeah. it 
completely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that sense of ownership that you gave them um, yeah. over, you know, sort of their experience and giving them a platform to really share what's going on for them away from, as you said, institutions and perhaps barriers that were getting in the way you kind of freed them up. It sounded like. Um, so I know you said you had a lot of people that were involved in this process and you mentioned um, teachers were really kind of the crucial role here and being, as you mentioned, the middle people who connected you with young people and who supported them in coming along the first few meetings that you had. Um, so how did you get their buy-in on contributing or helping uh, to this project? Well, um, it, it was um, through, um, obviously I was engaging with teachers who are very dedicated and enthusiastic supporters of their students and their subject mm. and who completely get the importance of self-expression mm. and who are acutely aware of the need for their students to have a social platform so they got completely what the idea behind the project was mm. and they completely supported it once I'd explained it all to them and mm. and and also the English Association, we ourselves put together a, an explanatory um, invitation and information um, sheet about it, which we emailed to a range of different teachers who I managed to track down through 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 the network within which, you know, through the English network, mm. through the Joy FE community, through Twitter. Mm. Um, so a no number of different routes, as all these things must be necessarily. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and through that, we got positive responses and so we had contributors from a London sixth form college, a Birmingham sixth form, form college, an FE college in Chesterfield, an FE college in Cheshire and another FE college in Warrington. So five different colleges from across England mm -hmm. and um, we got students from there. So about 30 students in total who contributed mm -hmm. um, to and we worked together for from January to July. Wow. And so with all the collaboration that you um, had everyone kind of um, helping helping with, did you just realize you were onto something here with the response that you were getting? Well, the thing is, we, we, we just all so strongly believed it was so important for young people, a bit like mm -hmm. a first aid thing, you know, a mental health thing, you know, we just, we just felt so strongly that young people needed the outlet that literature can provide because literature storytelling is a source of solace, a source of grounding, a source of um, creativity, a source of escape, you know, um, a bridge, um, you know, it, it literature is, provides such a vital role for humanity. Mm. Uh, and, and of course, all of us at the English Association, well, I can't speak for everyone, but you know, that's, you know, storytelling is the heart of English, you know, it's the heart of our mm. subject. Mm. And, and students just were so hungry to tell their stories as indeed everyone is, mm. if you give them the opportunity. So, you know, we were pushing an open door. And um, so, you know what I mean? If you give people opportunities, they're gonna jump at it. Why not, you know? Absolutely. We're all looking to tell our story, aren't we? In whatever way, shape or form that is. And as you mentioned, it is about solace, about grounding, and especially during these crazy changing times, you know, we need those, you know, we need a platform to be able to share our experience and be a bridge for one another, I think. Um, so what was that first session like when you met with everyone together um, in that room? From what I heard from you, it was absolutely incredible. It was really great, actually. It was in a dark winter's afternoon, about half past four. So it was dark outside. It was in January, late January, I think. Mm. And uh, so we met up on Zoom, um, and all the, a lot of the the screens, you know, we couldn't see the students. They didn't show their faces, which is a bit unnerving. Mm. Um, but that is just the way it is, and you just have to respect that. Mm. And um, so anyway, we just introduced ourselves by with the, the first sort of opening was tell us one thing about lockdown, mm. your lockdown experience. And we start Jenny, it was Jenny, myself and Becky and the teachers and the students. Mm. And so the the um, so myself, Becky and Jenny started the whole thing up, obviously, mm. to, to, you know, put ourselves on, on the line as well. So we talked, but, you know, we sort of adopted a very sort of informal, friendly, hopefully supportive kind of tone once mm. we'd explained what this is all about. 
and um, and it was amazing because the students were really eager without you know to share their their experiences their feelings um of what lockdown has been like and we were really kind of blown away by how open they were um and how you know just yeah and how expressive they were mm. and um and how ready they were and you really did feel that kind of hunger to connect with each other across england you know the, the, all these mm. different young people coming together mm. And it was made more acute because it was in a lockdown context. We were all actually in lockdown when we met, mm -hmm. you know, and I suppose it was made even more kind of intense because it was dark outside as well because it was winter. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, we just, you know, just ignited. It was just, it was really, really powerful, actually. Mm -hmm. you know? And what did you feel you learned during this project about yourself, even as a, as a practitioner? What have you taken away um, you know, during this experience, but after the this publication was was complete, I think what it what I've learned and what I was again reminded of is, you know, that it's so important to be ambitious, and it's so important not to underestimate young people or any or any students, any mm -hmm. students at all. It's really important to, to never underestimate what's possible mm -hmm. because this was lockdown. It was on Zoom. None of us were going to meet in a room. We'd never met these young people. Were they going to turn up every week, you know, whatever? Were they going to participate? Were they going to upload their stuff on, you know, Google Docs and all of the different things that Becky Fisher organised online for them to, to contribute to make sure we got their stuff? Were they going to meet the deadlines? Were we actually going to have a final publication? I mean, there were times when you were a bit kind of, oh, you know, but actually, oh my, they all came up with the goods and it was just amazing um, and so I suppose what I've learned I mean you just is to hold keep holding your nerve keep mm -hmm. holding your nerve keep having the faith and uh, just keep on keeping on mm -hmm. because students can be unpredictable stuff gets in the way things can maybe not happen for a bit but you just have to hold your nerve if your core idea and belief thing is is the right it works mm. then hopefully it'll work mm. and in this case it absolutely did I don't know if you can hear the thunder and see the lightning but oh my <laughs> the skies are opening up in Manchester right now <laughs> it's adding to the drama I love yeah, it yeah really oh my <laughs> was there any particular story or experience that stood out for you um one that you recall that wow made an impression on you Oh, that's really hard to answer, you know, because mm. every single piece of writing in the quarantines, whether it's a poem, a diary entry, a story, a visual image or a film, mm. it, whatever it is, it's all really powerful. I mean, mm. I'll just give you two, two brief examples. One example was a video which when you press play, it was just darkness it was all it's like the texture of a cave wall and it went on for minutes mm. and then you just heard this sort of howling noise or this wailing and that was a response to lockdown and it was incredibly powerful wow. that was it wow it was really powerful mm. and then another is a an image of a, a young woman with a mask it's a, a pencil drawing that one of the, the participants did of a young person wearing a mask with, I think she had a tear. Hmm. And then superimposed is, is a, a really lovely, I think it's about an eight lined poem hmm. about that experience. But I mean, you know, every single piece, whether it was a, a, a sci-fi dystopian story, um, you know, um, they are, Every single one of them is just, uh, you know, it's, mm. I just recommend, it's a recommended read to mm. actually, and as the student said at the launch that we had last week, um, you know, one of, they, was, they were all commenting to each other and saying, look, you know, very soon people might forget what this lockdown experience was like, but we've actually got a written record now forever. Mm. that we'll be able to show in the future about mm -hmm. this is what it was like mm. and um and then another student said that she read her her, her work out to her family and it made her father cry and she'd never seen him cry before but also it it 
initiated a whole discussion with her family about lockdown and that experience. And indeed, a lot of them were saying that it, it triggered in a, in, a, in, a, in a really good way, a lot of conversations about what lockdown has been like for them as young people, mm. you know, and it, it, it was literature in action. It's the role of literature, you know, mm. it was it's naming an experience, exploring it creatively, um, and then also providing an opportunity for catharsis, for kind of letting go and feeling upset and thinking about the loss and feeling the loss, as well as all the gains and unexpected things like the meeting with these young people on this social platform, for instance. Mm. I mean, we created a community of writers. We have a community of writers and it was created through lockdown on Zoom across England mm. with young people, you mm. know, 16 to 18 year olds. Yeah. And, and they turned up and they did it. Mm. So, yeah. And it sounded like it transformed the lives of not only them as the participants and the writers and the owners of this, but also transformed the lives of their families as well, providing a platform for them to share or to have like a bit of catharsis or release. Um, I think that just goes to show the power of a story or a narrative, um, shared experience um, that we've all had during this time. And, you know, when people have the platform, um, the right yeah. platform to share it, you know, there's, there's learning that happens, something wonderful that happens. Absolutely. Um, mm. yeah. So, with our audience in the Adult Learning Hub, we have a lot of educators in a number of different contexts. So, you know, I'm curious to get your insights into what educators can take away from this, practitioners can take away from a project like this and maybe apply to their own settings or learnings that you experienced um, that maybe we can apply to our, our own settings. I think, I think, the thing, I, I suppose if you have an idea, go for it. You know, just mm. go for it and try it out, you know, mm. because you've got, no, you know, you've got nothing to lose, really. Obviously, it depends on your context, but but actually, um, I would recommend you join a network. If you're not in a network, you mm. know, well, obviously you are because here you are on the Adult Learning Hub, but that's yeah. really important to utilise mm. the Adult Learning Hub mm. as a network to mm. provide you the support, um, you know, to to create projects and and and. Uh, um, I just think that's, I think projects are really great things because they are free from all the, the gridlock of assessments and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so that, that's one thing. And it, they enable creativity to really take off and they give, they enable people to have a sense of voice and agency mm. in unexpected ways. Mm. Um, and um Sorry, what was the question again? I've lost the thread. What can edu educators take away? What can they take away? So yeah. yeah. So, so and share and share share your ideas and share your, you know, share what you've done so that other people can can learn from what you've done. Mm. And so then we can build on that. I think that's really, really important. Mm. Um and tell your stories, write things down, get things published. Mm. Um again to share I just think it's really really important to share mm. through writing through talking through interviewing through podcasts um, because the more that we share our constructive positive experiences as well as things that maybe you try out and don't work because we can mm. learn as much from things that don't work as from things that do work mm. um, and that's as important actually isn't it mm. um and uh yeah, and I think communication is really, really important and forging relationships is really, really important. Professional relationships mm. um, is really, really important. Mm. And the way, I mean, the most effective ways in terms of adult learning for me, that the kind of absolute kernel, which I think is probably the case, is what absolutely matters is that you get to know your students and you know mm. where they know from, you know, what they're, you know, what their stories are so that you can reconfigure your own teaching responses to where they are from mm. so it's kind of in inclusive yes um and um and then and also to consult and and have meaningful conversations and dialogue with with your students in terms of feedback mm. um, because then you can build on their on their wisdom and their own expertise because our students are their own kinds of experts and their own lives 
and there's a lot for us to learn. It's a two-way street always. Um, so I don't know if that's, um, I mean, I could go on and on, but yeah. That's brilliant. I think there's a number of insights we can take away from, from that and the importance of sharing our stories, collaborating and networking. Um, sharing resources I mean, as well. Sharing you know? resources, absolutely. Twitter, Twitter, you know, do mm. not denigrate Twitter, anyone. Um, I recently wrote a TS article. If you go on to mm. TS, you'll see it as about Twitter as an edu as a really mm. important, vibrant mm. tool for educators to connect. Um, you know, in 140 characters, you can share quite a lot. You can put on a link and share to other people, but also you can find out about events, mm. um, about the Adult Learning Hub, about all mm. sorts of things through Twitter. Mm. Um, it is an invaluable resource for, for teachers who are time poor without any doubt. That's right. Uh, so it's a, it's a quick, fast track mm. to get to get agency and connections with all sorts of people who you otherwise might not. So it really does mm. um, work against the isolation that you can feel, particularly in adult community education. You can mm. find yourself quite isolated in your evening class in a community centre. You know, mm. get on Twitter mm. and then, you know, after your evening class is over, do a post about something mm. and people will jump on and give you some encouragement. And that can really help you, you know. Mm. I think it just goes to show, you know, communities are so powerful in having a sense of shared experience to say, you know, oh, are you like me? Yes. You know, I, I had that same experience just last week or, you know, some educators who are perhaps marginalized, you know, who need that sense of belonging to find others who are similar to them or who also work in kind of marginalized maybe contexts. Um, you mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes we can learn from perhaps, you know, mistakes or barriers that we came across or challenges, or if we were to look back, um, perhaps we would do something differently. With this project, um, is there anything that you might do differently if you were to do it all over again, when you think back to the last year? It's really hard because the context mm. was so hard. Mm. You know, working mm. in lockdown is unprecedented, isn't it? Um, and I kind of go into kind of rabbit in the headlights in, in response to that question, because we were just so much learning as we went and we were all in this lockdown kind of freak out time globally um, and we were all doing the best that we could. Um, so I, I find it hard in my brain to configure how we could have done it better mm. or if I was to do it again, how I would do it differently because mm. I, maybe it's just too new. It only ended uh, just very recently. So I probably need more time to process in mm. answer to that, really. Mm. To be fair, because mm. um, it was an incredible experience. Mm. Quite an organic experience as well, oh, too. Definitely. You know, naturally arising from lockdown, of course, are our stories and experiences. And to have a platform for young people um, and for their. And it, their it will never be repeated. Support. Yeah. It will never right. be repeated because, well, well who knows actually but that particular lockdown experience anyway you know yeah yeah how did the yeah. educators who were supporting the the students how did they feel about this process about the their experience um supporting their their learners well i suppose first of all i'd say you'd have to ask them but um mm -hmm. just observing them i think mm -hmm. they they were very much um backstage if you like doing the backstage work mm -hmm. so they were the link people in the institution so I know that they would have been encouraging the young people saying, How, how's it going? How's it going? Oh, hey, let me see your work or, you know, mm. let's have a read. And so they would have been championing and cheerleading in the background. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but initially when they came along for the first couple of meetings, I think it was, they were just great sort of trying to be a bit backgroundy, but also there to support their students and make them feel comfortable and safe. So mm. it was really important they were there. Mm. But then they, they were quite willing to kind of back off and give over to the students and uh but I'm I have no doubt that they were mm. supporting in the background because that's what teachers do isn't it you know mm. and so all credit to them we couldn't have done it without them mm. you know and are you happy with the finished product I'm absolutely blown away with the finished product yeah I just think it's great I wish I had it with me actually but I forgot to bring it because oh. um, I could have shown it yeah. but uh but um, I'm blown away by it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'm mm. really, really proud of everyone who was involved with it and of the final product. And mm. I am so delighted that the English Association was up for it. 
you know, good for them, you know, fantastic organisation, which I encourage all English teachers to, to join, you know, it's yeah. 30, £33 for a membership and it's worth every penny, you know, it's access to loads of stuff, it's really good. Amazing. And you can get stuff published through them and all sorts. Brilliant, brilliant. And how can we get a copy of The Quarantines? The English Association, just go onto their website mm-hmm. and all will be revealed. Fantastic. I love it. And Mm. at the end of every interview, I always ask um, my experts, what are three things that you know to be true about learning in adulthood? Um, Three things. It's hard hard to distill things down to three things. I know. uh, You know, uh, I've I've kind of already mentioned some of them, but I think one one of the most important things is know your students mm. know know where they where they know from and forge um listening and supportive um relationships with them i think mm. that's you're not going to go get anywhere with students if you don't respect who they are and get to know where they're from and you know and appreciate all of that um and i think the other thing i would say is be ambitious always be ambitious never ever underestimate students never underestimate what they're capable of Mm. you know I mean I always quote Emily Dickinson which I have as my Twitter handle you know I dwell in possibility you know every single student has tons of possibility and we are there to enable that to come out somehow or another and the only brick wall the only time I know when I've met an absolute brick wall and I have met in my time quite a number is when you encounter someone who cannot be bothered I mean the Mm. the secret is if you've got Mm. someone who is who can be bothered if they can be bothered in spite of whatever they're going through you're on you're on it it's all right it's going to be okay Mm. but if you're with someone who really can't be bothered Mm. absolutely they are totally resistant no matter what you do you just have to you know I'm afraid and it's you know you have to know when to walk away there's no point in bashing your head against people anyway um mm. and and I think the third thing although that's a kind of meandered there is um is to yes is to consult with your students to engage in conversations to get feedback to mm. so how is that you know what do you think um because you can get some real insights from young people Um, I've done quite a lot of work on this in in other things about student action research, students to student consultation. And, you know, if you get students talking to each other about what's happening, then they can feed back to you hugely about what they've said to each other about what's been going on in the education, in the class or whatever it is. But also just engage in genuine dialogue with them about, about, you know, how they found whatever it is you've been doing, what, Mm. you know, is there any, have they got any other ideas or, you know, just to make it meaningful and relevant and, and make sure you're not going off, off beam. So they've got no idea what's going on. You know, mm. you've got to, they've got to go with you. You've got to go with them. They've got to go with you. Otherwise mm. you get it, you know, mm. it's a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. Yeah. yeah. How can people get in touch with you if they want to find out more about the quarantines or they would like to connect with you? Okay, so if you want to connect with me, then you can always connect with me by direct messaging on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is Draper with E-L at the end, which is for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mm -hmm. Draper. So it was my first login in my first job in education. The IT person called me Draper L. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, that's how it is. He was called Richard Hobday, actually, all those years ago. Um, Anyway, (laughs) Draper L, that's my Twitter handle or through LinkedIn, Elizabeth Draper on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. or on my email address, which again is draperl mm-hmm. at googlemail.com. Brilliant. And I'm very happy to, you know, talk, share, whatever with anyone. Yeah. Great. And I'll put all those details. Um, the, the details are in the description below so people can reach out to you that way. Um, okay. But thank you so much, Elizabeth, for joining me today. Um, and if anyone is watching this and they enjoy this interview and they want to experience more learning as a practitioner or connect with other adult learning professionals like Elizabeth or myself in a community where your stories and experiences matter, um, consider joining the Adult Learning Hub. Um, You can sign up for our mailing list below or go to the adultlearninghub.com to sign up as a member. All right. Thank you again, Elizabeth, for joining. I really enjoyed our discussion today. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it as well, Jane. Thank you so much. That's great. All right. Take care. Okay. You too. Bye.